It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Jeff Soderquist, who is the now outgoing coach at John Brown University, 27 years at the helm, coach. And, you know, it's it's been quite a run there in Siloam Springs. Sooner Athletic Conference champions, tournament champions this year. It's, it's been a great season, but let's uh, just overall view right now. Congratulations on a great run, coach. Thank you. It was. It was, it was a great season. And, um, you know, when we started off the year, two and three and our All-American was hurt and everything else. I didn't know we would put together 27 straight wins, but it it just shows the type of uh, players that I have and the ladies that I have. They just stuck with it and we just kept getting better and it was quite the run. Well, you didn't back down from any non-conference opponents either. I mean, it was, it was a tough open to the schedule, but the Sooner Athletic Conference is a very tough conference in, in women's basketball historically not only getting the uh, the tournament championship which is a feat in of itself part of that 27 game winning streak was going 22 and 0 through the Sooner Athletic Conference talk about that it was it, it was like you said i mean we we've had some some really good teams we've had teams that win the national title out of our conference that never went undefeated in conference so um yeah, I mean, you know, we took five teams out of our conference to the national tournament this year, so so the level of competition was was really good. And that was the unique thing about this team is I know Tara gets a lot of uh, limelight, which she should because she she is kind of the 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 foundation of what we do. But we've had different people step up different nights, and you know, kind of the our big three has have been you know uh, Tara um, Stevens, Natalie Smith, and Emily Sanders. But on other nights, we've had different people step up and and do different things. And I think that was what made this team so good is um, uh, we just found out ways to win when when certain and the way people played us and and also just how the ups and the downs of the season goes with some players. We, we, we've had different people step up every night. Obviously, you have to adapt, uh, and and that's that's a big part of it. Which is what you do as the coach. You you make those decisions, and uh, congratulations again on being able to do so in such a great manner this year, making it to the NAI tournament once again. Coach, over the years, uh, you've had great players like Tara Stevens, who recently named All American. Congratulations to her for that. I yeah. remember names like Sierra Shipley, uh, Bailey Cameron in my time in in covering the NAIA, and I know there have been more. Uh, just to get to coach players like that over the course of the last nearly three decades. Talk about that a little bit and some of those players. Yeah, I've, I've had so many I could go back. I, I mean, I got to go back to my very first recruit that actually played for Coach Neighbors at Bettenville High School when he was the Bettenville High School coach. And, of course, now he's the U of A coach, but was Martha Hancock. And she was a – she was – I mean, as I was trying to build a team right there, if she would have played on some better teams, I mean, she ended up getting All American honorable mention. But I think she she would have she would have gotten a lot more if we kind of had some some uh, teams that were you know a little bit more successful than 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 what we were back then. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I, I never thought I would be able to coach uh, three girls that broke the scoring record. And the first one was Kendra McCormick, who yeah. broke uh, Holly Robinson's record. Um, who was actually a student when I was a student at John Brown. I know Holly well, um, but Kendra broke her record. And then turning around, having Bailey Cameron score. I never thought I'd have a player score over 2,000 points, and Bailey did that and and passed Kendra. And I surely did not think I'd have two players score over 2,000 points and then Tara passing Bailey. So it was it was quite uh, quite the compliment to be able to play, to, to be able to have those four type players um uh, that, that I've able to coach and and you know th- you mentioned Sierra Shipley. Sierra Shipley, she was on our team that went to the NAI Final Four, um, and as a two guard, what people don't realize, she led us in scoring, which everybody kind of figures that, but she led us in scoring, she led us in assists, she led us in rebounds, and she led us in steals um, as a two guard and on a team that was really good. I mean, that went twenty eight and eight and fin- made it to the Final Four, and so. Um, yeah, and, and I like you said, I could list a lot of other players um, out of my 27 years that were just really good, uh, outstanding players. But yes, it's 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 been a joy to, to go. And you know what? All of them, you know, are really good students and are really good people. I mean, John Brown's one of the top academic schools in the nation, and this year 
out of my 14 players, I had nine of them that were academic All-Americans that were 3.5 or more. So to have a team go 29 and four and to have uh, nine of them be academic All-Americans, I, I think that that's, that's really special. and says a lot to the young ladies that, that I coach. Well, that's that's a fantastic way to go out too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Go out on. We're visiting here on the summit on Midwest Sportsnet with Coach Jeff Soderquist, who is the head coach or, or finishing his time as the head coach of the women's basketball team in Siloam Springs there at John Brown. And coach, you when you took the job, uh, you were the assistant coach for the men's team. The position came open as the women's head coach. You took the job. I realize it's the same game, but it's it's vastly different in, in in many many ways in 27 years time you have it down and, and i think that's clear and the and the proof is there but how, how was it at the beginning was there any kind of of hiccup in the transition were you able to come in and i know you won your first five games but talk about coaching and and uh, being a, a leader of a different game yeah, I'd been with the men's side at JBU for six years, two years as a student assistant because I had an injury that I couldn't play anymore. Um, so the coach, uh, Coach Sheehy at the time, knew I wanted to be a, a coach. So he said, well, why don't you come since you can't play and be a student assistant? So I was a student assistant. Then when I graduated, I took over the assistant job and did that for four years. And, yeah, you know, when they approached me when the women's coach was retiring and and Coach Sheehy came in and, and just totally – turned around the men's men's program here at JBU and, and did a great job. So I learned a lot uh, from him and how to do that. Um, and so when the school approached me about taking the girls over, I was like, oh, I don't think so. Um, but then talking with Coach Sheehy and, 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 and really him and the athletic director at the time, Dr. Burns, feeling like I was prepared to do this, um, uh, you know, and they really th- – you know, and then I started thinking, hey, head coaching jobs just don't come around very often. So maybe I, I need to take that. And I originally took it thinking someday I was going to get back to the men's side. Right. And um, uh, but, yeah, I think their year one was awesome. I, I mean, I, I just the girls were just bought in. I had a great senior group that were so hungry for coaching um, and we're all bought in. And, and, you know, they were getting beat you know, really uh, um, bad before, but we upset some teams that first year. You know, I still think we ended up maybe having a losing record at the end. We we're just under 500, but we upset some teams and we played teams really close. We were in games and, and it was just a fun year. Year two through six, I was swimming and I was learning. I was like, I remember there was times I mean, what have I done? Um, and, and luckily the school stayed with me uh, through that process. Um, I had great mentoring and the school stayed with me, but I had to learn the differences. You know, as you said, the game is kind of same, but the differences between um, coaching females and males. Um, you know, I played with guys that I really didn't get along with. I mean, there is a brotherhood, but, but you know, I, I kind of played with guys I didn't, didn't get along with. Um, girls can't do that. And I, and, I, and I had to figure that out. And I had to figure out, um, um, really emphasize building a team. You know, I, I got a quote that during that time that, that really made sense to me is um, a team just doesn't spontaneously happen. You bring a group together and over time and competition, it forms to a team. And, and I had to learn that right there. It's just We're not just going to show up on campus that first day and be a team, especially females. And I had to learn how to do that year two through six. I think I made some mistakes. I also trying to figure out recruiting to my style of play and, and the type of female athlete that I needed. Um, and, um, and I made mistakes. I was not, it was not just the players. I made mistakes. I made mistakes in recruiting. I made mistakes in, in coaching the players. Uh, I was young, kind of fiery, probably a little more. Um, and, and really the school stuck with me and, and really kind of, Got it going. And year seven was the first year I got us to the national tournament and we had a really good team. And, and, and not that I would say I figured it all out on year seven, but I certainly learned a lot year two through six. And there was times I doubted myself in that time. But but I do. I do think uh, I think, you know, I think 
guys also have more ego where girls aim to please the coach more. And I, you know, I just, and again, these are generalizations. I'm not saying that everything's like that, but, but I, you know, I had to learn that and and this also learn the type of female athlete that, that I wanted my style of play. Um, uh, you know, I kind of was forming that during that time. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I, it, it was a, but I, then I never went back. I really felt like once I figured it out, um, I, I really felt like the women's game was my niche. And I really felt like I had a good rapport with the uh, female athletes and, and, um, and I had my chances to go back to the men's side over the years, but I turned them all down and I, and I stayed with the women's side. I really felt like, man, this, this is really my niche and, and something that I feel like I'm, I think I'm pretty good at, but uh, I don't know always. Well, the, the results uh, at least uh, seem to, to say that you are and, and have done a good job with it. Been there for 27 years, and I, I recognize also, and, and you mentioned it too, you know, a uh, student athlete, uh, student assistant, assistant coach as well. So your time at John Brown is, is more than just the 27 years as a head coach, uh, well more than three decades there with the university. Talk about being with a program that long and uh, John Brown in specific, specifically uh, billed as a premier Christian university in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. I mean, you count, I came in 1988 as a student athlete for John Brown. So I'm actually been there for, if you count my time as a, as an athlete, 36 years. So um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, that, that's another reason why I've had my opportunities kind of after I got the program going in the early 2000s after that year seven, um, my name kind of became a hot name right out there, right there for, for people to seek me for a job. And, you know, I, I guess just like I felt like the women's program was a niche, I really felt like John Brown was a, was a, a niche for me because our mission statements were the same. Um, I really uh, agreed with the mission statement of John Brown, as you said, a Christian uh uh, organization and, and just how I ran my program and, and, um, and those type of things. So I, I, again, I, I just decided to, to stay here. I never thought I'd be, um, uh, my wife reminds me all the time. I told her when I was getting married, I was going to be the guy that goes around and turns around programs and then leave and then go turn around another program. And here, here I still am <laughs> here and I never did that. Uh, I laugh because I've said, I've had to turn around my program a couple of times over the years. But um, yeah, I, I think John Brown's a unique place. <clears throat> I always, when, when I when I talk about it in recruiting, there's that Christian atmosphere. As I've already mentioned, a high academic institution. We're known around as being one of the, the top academic institutions. Um, and you try to put a athletic program together uh, in that. Some people think that that's hard, and and it is. I mean, my pool of people I have to look at is, is smaller. But um, uh, I, I think John Brown, the thing I've appreciated is they do things with excellence, whether it's you, you come to our campus and you look at our grounds and we've got one of the most prettiest campus and everything they do, they want to do with excellence. And so they want to do their athletics with excellence, but they want to do it with kids that are that are great student athletes and, and that uh, are also going to represent Christ. And everything that we do and so that fit me and that fit who i was and and so um so yeah i've just enjoyed my time here um i never thought i'd do this I, i've officiated three of my players weddings and that was something when i got into coaching i never thought i would do but that was something special for me that that they would consider me doing that and and just i'm still friends like i mentioned martha hancock my first recruit. I was just texting with her last week. I mean, I'm still all these girls I'm still very close with and, and, and we keep in touch and, and all that. So it's, it's been a good run. That's, that is great to hear coach. I, I appreciate that. 424 and 402. Those are the numbers that uh, go with your era at John Brown, 826 games coach. I'm sure there are a few that that do stand out. Is there any one uh, or two that, that come to mind right off the bat? Yeah, we've had, I mean, one of the big ones is that run we made in 2013, 14 in, in uh, to the final four. Um, we had 
first round game we actually drew. It was in Frankfort, Kentucky. We actually drew Lyon College, which is another Arkansas school, and and beat them by by seventeen. Of course, Tracy had a good team, but but we were pretty good. And then we turned around and played one of my closest friends, Russ Davis from Vanguard, and they were number one in the nation. And we turned around and beat them um, by I think two points. And but you know you know how the NEI tournament goes. You play. And you play, and then we had to play our third game, and I was worried about that third game. I was, I thought, man, we are tired. So it took a lot out of us to beat Vanguard, the number one team in the nation, and I was really worried about that third game. And we were playing a really good Loyola team out of New Orleans, uh, very athletic, very well coached, um, and we weren't playing well, and we looked flat, and we looked dead, and we were down 18 with 7.50 to go. And we went on a 24 to three run or 23 to four run or something and ended up winning the game. Um, uh, on a, we, uh, Brooke Barker, <clears throat> one of my wing players from Lubbock, Texas, hit a three pointer um, with about time to expire and, and, and that come back. And then we had a day off, which was nice, which we needed. And then we were playing a team. Oklahoma City that for the fourth time because they're a conference school we beat them in the semis of the conference tournament but then they beat us in the semis of the national tournament by two and then went, went on one that next time but that that comeback um I, I remember that comeback was 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 really special especially to do it in the national tournament right there but um yeah I mean <clears throat> many of games uh over the regular season um that 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 we had I remember a game being down 18 to Wayland. We were both ranked at home uh, at halftime, and our girls came back and won that game and and big games. I remember Martha Hancock, her senior year, uh, Oklahoma City was number one in the nation, and uh, they came into our place, and um, we beat them, and that was their only loss on the whole year. They went on to win the national title. Um, that game was, was, was huge. Um, so, yeah, I mean – I could just go on and on. For 27 years, we've had a lot of good games and and uh, um, you know really really fun games. Those are, those are fun to listen to, Coach. I, I enjoy hearing you recount that, and and I, I know you can you can see it and and just be able to share. Well, I, I would ask then. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask if there is a particular direction that you have. What are what are some of the next steps for you then as as you move to the next phase? Yeah, you know, one thing that I think uh, I'm going to do this next couple of years, which I've done already in the last 10 years some, is is um, a number of coaches would like me to do some consulting. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll um, uh, do some consulting, um, you know, whether it's <clears throat> how to big culture. One, one of the things I'm known of um, that, that people talk about all the time is, is my culture on my team. People can usually see it. Recruits usually see it when they first come. So whether it's talking about culture or whether it's talking about X and O's, um, I've got a lot of people that want to look at my offense. And then, um, of course, defensively, we're always good. Um, and so I, I think there's, I think that's got a lifespan. I think I'll do that for about one or two years. Uh, then I might become irrelevant. Um, but, uh, <laughs> But I look forward to that. I've just, I've already done that some, and and I've enjoyed that. Um, and so I'll do some of that. My <clears throat> my wife and I, um, and my 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 family kind of really. But my wife and I have a foundation that we've had for years that, that helps out with ministries, whether it's uh, summer camps. To I've had a number of players go over and be missionaries, and, and we've helped them, and and just different type of ministries. Um, uh, and we want to get our, my, our kids, we're kind of empty nest now, and, and we want to get our kids involved more in the foundation. Um, my wife and I have also talked about, she was a marriage and family counselor for 25 years, and she actually retired a year ago previous, and we've talked about, is there some type of ministry with our skill sets that we can do together? Um, I've been involved in a couple little businesses that I might get a little bit more involved in. I've been on a number of boards and, and, you know, might do some more of that, but, um, and then there's what, what is, what does God have in store for me? Um, mm -hmm. Doors that he opens, but I got to do something. And my wife has definitely told me that I'm not a person. I'm pretty driven. I'm not a person that's just going to sit around. I like golf, but I can't play golf every day. Uh, I don't like it that much, um, but, uh, uh, and I can't sit around. So I'm going to take some time though. I need, I need, 
it's been a grind. Um, you know, I do feel a little worn out. Um, so I'm going to take some time for, for my wife and I and just spend some time, but then I will have to get involved in some things because I, I, I will go stir crazy if I'm just sitting around. <laughs> Well, it, I, I wish you well in that, Coach. And I just would add to all the people who've said congratulations on a fantastic career and what you've been able to sow into all of those athletes over the years as an assistant coach also, but in your time as the head coach there at John Brown. Congratulations, and congratulations on a great season. A fantastic year. Again, 29-4 and four regular season champions, undefeated in the Sooner Athletic Conference, tournament champions as well, trip to the NAIA uh, national tournament. Congratulations, coach. Thank you so much for taking time with us today. Well, thank you for taking the time to interview me. I appreciate it.